Hi, King Boomer. I cannot decide whether you look like a Civil War general or a communist dictator, but either way, I don't like it. Hello, Booms. How we doing today? Hope you're doing well. Got a reaction. This is something that I've never seen before. This is this is sent by Tricky D seventy seven. Hello, Tricky. And he says these two will tell you everything about British history you will need to know. Really? So is this serious or is this a comedy sketch? I don't know. I probably need to do a couple more serious reactions i've been it's like almost strictly comedy at this point not that i'm complaining or anything but i do like to throw in some other stuff every now and then so maybe i need to get around to that maybe this is it i don't know but it's uh let's check it out history today remember to like subscribe do whatever you guys want and let's see what this is all about here we go Good evening and welcome to History Today. No, this is definitely a comedy sketch. Look at this. it has got a wig on and a fake mustache. And he's making a face. It's definitely a comedy sketch. Here we go. I can tell you that no one is more surprised than myself and Professor F.J. Lewis when the news came through that we were to be granted another series of discussion programs on the television. However, I can assure all those who may have been uncertain about the decision that tonight's discussion on the perennial topic of romanticism and industrialization will be a most rigorous investigation into this always provoking issue. Professor F.J. Lewis, I wonder if we may begin by talking about the ways in which this period saw the beginning of social disintegration. Indeed. The collapse of the extended family meant that for literally thousands of women the only way of supporting themselves was to turn to prostitution. There are several accounts of this, but perhaps the most harrowing is My Life as a Prostitute, a first-person account by a woman who, being very ugly and suffering from scrofula, could not charge very much for her services and so was compelled, alas, to perform all sorts of degrading sexual acts with over 100,000 men. Well, this sounds like a very important source text, this uh, My Life as a Prostitute. I wonder, is there a modern edition of the publication? Uh, yes, it's um, Weidenfeld and Nicholson, uh, second edition, price £27.99. That's um, My Life as a Prostitute by your mum. <laughs> All that just to set up a mom joke. Oh my god. I do love a good mom joke though. But that, that long setup for it is <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. I see. I see. See a, a pond or a lake or a very, very large puddle. Yes. That's your bed, that is. <laughs> You're on the front cover of Bedwetters Monthly. Cool. What this period saw was essentially a pendulum-like movement, a swinging from romanticism to materialism, and then back again, and then violently back once more. Yes. And that's how you drive. <laughs> All over the shop. You know men who put fruit up each other's bottom. Yes. Oh, you do? Oh, you do? Yeah! <laughs> what is this? Just two guys dressed up as old men just roasting each other? Oh, God. Kind of reminds me of the uh, presidential debates that have happened in the last ten years. You know that. They're your friends. You've said it. You can't take it back now. No, I, I didn't mean I know them. <laughs> well, that's what you said. You shouldn't have said it. See, 
a pair of 3D glasses, which you get free with TV Quick, and they've got, like, an orangey bit and a green plastic bit on each eye, and, and they don't fit properly. Has the green piece come off slightly, and it's sort of hanging off? Yes, and there's some writing on the side where someone has tested a biro on it. <laughs> yes. That's your Ray-Bans, that is. <laughs> That's your cool shapes. <laughs> oh, hi, girls. <laughs> Tom Cruise here. <laughs> but, Professor Lewis, if we could return to the subject in hand. I was reading an interesting piece the other day. No, you weren't. Because <laughs> you can't read. <laughs> and you can't afford a book. Uh, well, actually, it was a piece by yourself. A rather fine piece in the Historical Inquirer. I was very impressed by it. Oh, were you? Thank you. I was particularly moved by a section on page 35 about the advancement of Scottish radicalism. I'd like to read from it, if I may. I'd be honoured. <laughs> oh my god, that was so stupid, but it was, it was funny. I was not ready for that. Your best work, I fear. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone can be in any doubt that tonight uh, romanticism and industrialization have been covered in a most invigorating way. Professor Lewis, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. That can't be it. This is like a 24 minute video. Uh, so it's a compilation of. It's called History Day. What does it say below? A compilation of sketches from the uh, 1993 series Newman and Badiel. Badiel? 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 Newman and Badiel in pieces. History Day was the only sketch from the Mary Whitehouse experience reprised for the duo's own series. Okay. Never heard of any of that. But it's It's interesting. Funny too. Good evening and welcome to History Today. I would like to take this moment to thank viewers who have stayed with us over the course of these discussions. We are under increasing pressure from the controllers who feel that we have been in some way disappointing those viewers with a yen for historical inquiry. I can only apologise and pledge that tonight both myself and Professor F.J. Lewis, Emeritus Professor of History at All Souls College, Oxford, are determined as never before to undertake a full and rigorous exposition of tonight's most exciting subject, the Doomsday Book. <laughs> the beginning of radicalism or the end of liberty. Professor Lewis. See that, Michael Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I am aware of his work. That's your haircut, that is. <laughs> You see those white plastic bracelets that mental patients wear? <laughs> that say, on continuous medication, return wearer to hospital. I have observed them. That's your swatch, that is. <laughs> That's your shockproof tag hoyer. It is indeed a, a moot point, end of radicalism, beginning of liberty. Yes. But this is a, a twilight period of transition. can be seen in the magical significance uh, 14th century mythology attaches to things which are themselves symbols of transition. Yes. Uh, the edge of a forest. Or twilight itself, that dusk before the day has really ended, but nor can one say that it is yet early evening. Of course. And that's your bedtime, that is. <laughs> That's your bedtime on Friday nights. <laughs> you had to add it was Friday nights. Yo, this, I like, yeah, okay. I, I'm liking this even more now. But it does, I feel like this, so this came out in 1993. Who would have known that this would have predicted how the uh, United States presidential debates went 30 years later? It's just, it reminds me a lot of that. 
just uh, more uh, more mellow. <laughs> You're on the front cover of Quarter Past Five Monthly. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> The importance of the Doomsday Book as a milestone in history can be seen from the fact that it is one of only a handful of books to be kept in cryogenic suspension at the British Museum. The book is held in a sealed chamber at a set temperature of minus 273 degrees Celsius, a temperature which in modern physics is known as absolute zero. Indeed. And that's the number of pubic hairs. <laughs> thought you had one the other day, but then you weed through it. <laughs> no! Who would have thought? Oh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm loving this. It's just the idea of two fucking historians just roasting each other in such a mellow manner. It's, oh, this is awesome. I could listen to this all day. You know those things that happen in the street after nine o'clock? Oh, yes, yes, very much so. Oh, so I presume you're familiar with the Viking longboat driven by Mary Peters down our street at 9.30? Yes, of course. <laughs> like all ships of Nordic pagan design, yes. had a curved aft and a curved stern. Thus. Yes, I'm aware of the design. And that's how you walk down the street. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Yo, stop it! Well, I don't think that anyone can be in any doubt that... Oh, hi, girls. <laughs> oh, no, quarter past five. <laughs> no. Tonight, uh, Professor Lewis and myself have had a most penetrating <laughs> and illuminating debate. <laughs> Professor F.J. Lewis... Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. He's still doing it. Oh, God. This is awesome. <clears throat> there you go. Give us the next roast. Good evening and welcome to History Today. Tonight's topic, uh, most exciting topic, if I may say, is the Enclosures Act and its effect on English rural population. Professor Lewis, I wonder if you would agree that the most perceptive analysis of 14th century culture may be garnered from the literature of the time, Langland, Bunyan, and specifically Chaucer. Gat hente and sorwe hem the lande went into the quente broke awa the pande. O kinge. I uh, would thou knelt dignole in date, ne scrivenish or craftile, though it are Indeed. <laughs> and how exactly would you interpret this piece? That's how your mum talks. <laughs> She's got a bit missing from her mouth. <laughs> it's a tragedy. Oh my god. I see. <laughs> See one of those boxes with a drawing of a cow on it, and when you turn it upside down, it goes, moo. <laughs> moo? Yes, moo. I have observed the novelty item. <laughs> That's your stereo, that. <laughs> yeah. That's your state-of-the-art Hitachi. <laughs> See that Matt Munro? No, I've never heard of him, and no one knows or cares who he is. Yes, that's you, then. <laughs> that was better. You know when you're walking through a field, and you tread in a cow pat, and then immediately, with the other foot, you tread in another cow pat. So I am, effectively, at this stage, standing in two piles of cack. <laughs> Up to the ankles. I have heard talk of the experience. <laughs> That's your new trainers, that is. <laughs> That's your 100 pound Reeboks. Uh. Professor Lewis, do you see that woman at the back of the television theatre? 
Do you mean right at the very, very back wall of the entire studio? Yes. From here, she is a barely distinguishable speck. I can just... just make her out. Look at his That's eyebrows. That's the nearest you've ever come to getting off with a girl. <laughs> that was good. I don't think anyone can be in any doubt that tonight, myself and Professor F.J. Lewis have had a most valid, rich and insulting <laughs> debate. <laughs> Professor F.J. Lewis, thank you very much. Oh, man. Oh, thank you. A history roast-off. That's what this is. I find myself, like, judging their uh, insults now. Because <clears throat> we're only halfway through this. I think the guy on the right has slightly better insults so far. Good evening and welcome to History Today. I have been informed that we must, on tonight's program, make every endeavor to stick with an academic discipline to tonight's topic, church and state. Professor Lewis. Well... We must remember that for large parts of our country's history, church and state were effectively one. This spiritual bureaucracy is reflected in the severity of monastic orders at the time. <laughs> Under the terms of his oath, a Benedictine monk, for example, could not only never have sexual relations with a woman, nor did he ever talk to a woman, nor even approach within 50 yards of a woman. I am aware of the strictures. And that's you on your 18 to 30 holiday, then. <laughs> well, that is. In every of insult. Course, Charles the first was executed in a dispute essentially concerning church and state. Hansard records that following his guillotining, um, the body jerked around grotesquely for 20 seconds, writhing about in a pitiful display his arms and legs shooting this way and that uncontrollably, as the gathered crowd laughed and spat. Indeed. And that's you dancing, that is. <laughs> that's the way, aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, I, I like it. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you see an old chipped saucer lying against a brick wall in an alleyway. Is it a green saucer from an institutional tea set? Yes, and it's gone brown where some tea has stained the white bit. <laughs> I have seen such an item of discarded bric a -brac. <laughs> Are they cracking? Are they breaking? It looked like they almost broke. That shit's funny. That's your satellite dish, that is. <laughs> the monarch who could be said to have truly united church and state was Elizabeth I. Her power was iconically linked with her refusal to marry, so that it became part of her mythology that she remained inviolate, known to all as the Virgin Queen. Yes. That's you, that is. <laughs> That's your most manly nickname. <laughs> Essentially, throughout our history, there has been a constant power shift moving from church to state, from state to church, thus, and then back again once more. I am aware of the continual fluctuation. And that's what everyone does when they stand downwind from your mind. <laughs> oh, cool, blimey, cool. <laughs> oh my God, dude, this guy is really getting on his mom. She's a prostitute. She has really smelly farts. What was the other one? I can't remember the last one. Oh. In the present day, woman. the balance seems to have shifted to state. But today's secular society is perhaps conditioned by an awareness of our temporal instability. Why, even this very land on which the battle between church and state was for so many years fought is continually being eroded by the sea. Our cliffs are moving back at a rate of four meters per year. I am aware of the topographical crisis. <laughs> and that's how fast you run. 
that's you on sports day. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone can be in any doubt that tonight myself and Professor Lewis have had a most incisive debate. Professor Lewis, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> they almost broke. That was funny to watch. They almost lost it and started cracking up. Good evening and welcome to History Today. We continue this evening with the subject of the Enclosures Act and its effect on the English rural population. As it would appear, there are those who feel that last week, myself and Professor Lewis didn't quite make the inroads into the subject that perhaps we might. So I wonder, Professor Lewis, whether you would agree with the Marxist that the Enclosures Act forms the point at which government first effectively becomes state. See that. I have observed the image. That's you in your latest clothes, that is. <laughs> That's you trying your best to be really with it. <laughs> That's what you wear when you're out on the pull. See that. I have observed the slide. That's your gang, that is. <laughs> Yeah. That's you with your hard mates. <laughs> Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. <laughs> See that? Yes. That's the man who works inside your pants. <laughs> That was good. See that? I have observed it. That's your most successful barbecue ever. <laughs> That's like the biggest single gathering of all your friends in the whole world. Yeah. See that? Uh-oh. I have observed the woman. That's someone who you've just told your funniest joke. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. Tell it to me again, Professor Lewis. Do. See that? Yes. That's your prostate gland. <laughs> I haven't got a prostate now. Yes, that's why it's in that warehouse. <laughs> See that. Do you mean the boyish figure in between the two girls? Yes. I have observed the Fort Leroyish figure. You've lost a fight to him. <laughs> He's staring you out right now. <laughs> You can't look him in the eye. <laughs> Go on, stare at him. You can't. See that? Yes. That's you having your best ever snob. <laughs> well, your bird never told you she was with me. <laughs> oh, ho, ho! ho, ho! I don't think anyone could mean any doubt that tonight, myself and Professor Lewis have had the most rigorous of debates. Professor Lewis, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Oh, man. Dude, I can watch... I, one thing that I am hoping is that this isn't all of them. I could watch these all day. This is hilarious. You know, Queen Boomer would really like this one, too. <laughs> Just childish fucking insults. Between two old historians. It's such a great concept. Good evening and welcome to History Today. Tonight we will be endeavouring to establish a cogent idea of British civic life, our institutions and so forth, from pre-Roman times to our own. 
Professor Lewis. I wonder if you would agree with radical Celtic historians that the notion of a centralised bureaucracy is essentially alien to the British character. Indeed, although the essential flux, which informs as nebulous a term as character, means that this theory topples over like a fallen tree. And that's what you did when you had your BCG. <laughs> What's BCG? I don't know what that is. I don't care about anything you say today, because tomorrow I'm going to Marine World in Brighton. <laughs> yeah, in a special bus. <laughs> and you can't even go to the toilet on your own. And the driver's on, like, strict instructions not to go over three miles per hour. <laughs> In case you get scared. <laughs> Even if that were the case, which it is not, it still remains the fact that it is I who am going to Brighton Marine World and not you. So, if we may return to the discussion in hand, I wonder if I might inquire, Professor Lewis, whether, all things considered, you have been to Brighton Marine World. <laughs> <laughs> British civic development changes course radically with the Great Fire of London, after which there was the opportunity to restructure and recodify the way records were kept. So that as tiny a spark in as lowly a place as Pudding Bowl Lane... That's where you have your hair cut. <laughs> it is not until the 19th century... And you that... eat your dinner in snot and bogey pie, haven't you? <laughs> you need special medicine to live. <laughs> I'm the one going to Brighton. Oh God! Oh, that was that was that one hit hard. Eat your dinner in snot and bogey pie. Oh. <laughs> you need special medicine to live, <laughs> and I'm the one going to Brighton Marine World. <laughs> it is, of course, <laughs> possible to achieve an exact dating for such artifacts. Uh, this coin, for example, is quite clearly inscribed with the letters C-L-M-X-I-I. -I. I have observed the obscription. Which is your best ever spelling of climax. <laughs> See a whelk stall outside a South London pub. Oh, yes, yes. And it's got to be about five o'clock on a hot Saturday afternoon. And all that's left on the display tray are a few sorry-looking jelly deals, one whelk, and a couple of dried-up, shriveled prawns. I have observed such a roadside establishment. That's Brighton Marine World. <laughs> <laughs> now he does it. Man, that was good. I really like that. Thank you, Tricky, for sending that in, man. But I'd never heard of that show before. What is it? Newman and Badiel in Pieces? I'm probably saying that wrong. I say a lot of things wrong, man. Uh, but, yeah, just seeing them two just trade, like, playground insults between each other, pretending to be old historians and talking in such a proper manner. That's That's hilarious. That's hilarious. I love that. I could I could watch like three hours of that. That was amazing. Anyway. I thought it was amazing. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, I want more. Hopefully there's more of these uh, out there somewhere. So if there is, let me know, please, by all means, in the comments or wherever. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the reaction. Like, subscribe, do whatever you guys want. And I'll see you again next time. Peace out.